Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray, pray for, for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we continue to celebrate with great joy the triumph of Jesus over sin and death. And through this Mass, Jesus shares this new life of the resurrection to each one of us. Let us make ourselves worthy to receive this new life of Jesus. Let us be sorry for our sins and let us beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace to his of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, you we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you, you. we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. 
for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You, children of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You deny the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given his, this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and the Lord may grant you times of refreshment, and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among our kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is the man that you should be mindful of him? 
or the Son of Man, that you should care for him? O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with the glory and honor. You have forgiven him rule over the works of your hands, putting all these things under his feet. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. O Lord, our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus, it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the resurrection of Jesus must really be something difficult to understand. I say this because 
even with the testimony of Mary Magdalene, of Peter and John, who early that Sunday morning went to the tomb and found the tomb of Jesus empty, and even with the testimony of the two disciples who were going to Emmaus and who met Jesus along the way, and even while they were talking about the possibility of Jesus rising again from the dead, when Jesus appeared before them, they all still thought he was a ghost. Nakita na nga nilang walang laman yung libingan. Nagpakita na nga si Jesus dun sa dalawang alagad papunta ng Emmaus. Pinag-uusapan na nga nila na baka nga muling nabuhay si Jesus. Pero nung dumating si Jesus at nagpakita sa kanila, akala pa rin nila multo ang nasa harapan nila. Jesus had to prove himself to them. Jesus asked them to look at his hands and his feet. Jesus even ate before them. All these Jesus did in order to help them understand and believe. Jesus took the, the time in order to explain to them the whole of scriptures, in order to open their minds and to help them understand and believe that He is truly risen. Come to think of it, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus did not need to do all this Jesus did not need to go about the trouble of convincing his doubting disciples that he is truly alive. Hindi na kailangan gawin ito ni Jesus. But the risen Lord is so patient with his disciples that he did not get angry when they did not understand. He did not even reprimand, castigate, or even ridicule them when they failed to believe. He did not give up on their unbelief. With all gentleness and with all patience, Jesus helped his disciples believe and understand hindi siya nagalit nang hindi sila maniwala. Buong pagtsatsaga na tinulungan ni Jesus ang kanyang mga alagad na maunawaan at manalig, maniwala na siya'y muling nabuhay. This is also what we saw in the preaching of St. Peter in our first reading today. Peter preached to the Jews and with all patience, napakahaba ng preaching na yan ni St. Peter. Ilang araw na natin binabasa yan. Pero buong pagtsatsaga, nagtuturo si Pedro upang tulungan ang mga Hudyo na maunawaan at manalig kay Jesus. The reason why Peter preached was in order to help the Jews believe and understand Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, do we have that same patience in order to help our brothers and sisters understand and believe in Jesus? It is not enough that we believe that Jesus rose again from the dead. What are we doing in order to help those who do not yet believe so that they too 
may understand and believe in Jesus. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, until now, there are many people who think of Jesus as a ghost. Marami pa rin tao ang tingin kay Jesus multo dahil para sa kanila, hindi totoo si Jesus. Gawa-gawa lang yan ang isip. Si Jesus ay parang multo na kathang isip lamang. They do not believe in Jesus because for them, Jesus does not matter. Para siyang multo. Or for some people, they think of Jesus as a ghost. Something to be afraid of. Takot tayo sa multo at akala natin si Jesus parang multo, nakakatakot. We do not see Jesus as a merciful and as a loving Savior. Let us not judge these people who are weak in faith. Let us be patient with them and like Jesus, let us help them understand and believe. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is also the principle of every priest when we deliver, when we give our homilies, especially at Mass. Our homilies are invitations to each one of you who are joining the Mass in order to understand and believe. I have to admit to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that because of the live streaming of Masses, giving a homily has become more difficult because not only do we not see those listening to us, it is because of the variety of people listening to us. And I have to tell you, that we receive many comments and feedbacks about our homilies and we appreciate them because they help us improve. Minsan nga, meron pang parang ginegradean kami. <laughs> Siguro mga teacher na namimiss ang mga estudyante pagkatapos namin mag-homily may grade. No? Father, for your homily today, 83 ang grade mo. Tapos, i-enumerate yung mga comments. No? You ask many questions about things we say. But you see, my dear brothers and sisters, the truth is, when we give our homilies, we are like teachers. And we know that not everyone has the same level of faith. Not everyone has the same level of comprehension. There are some of you who could easily understand what we say in simply one statement. But there are some who would need that we repeat the point that we are driving at in many ways. Kaya yung iba sasabihin, Father, ba't pa ulit-ulit? No? Bakit sinabi mo na ng English, tatagalugin mo pa? It is because some people do not understand English. And some people do not understand Tagalog. We have to be patient. How we wish we could simply say everything in a very short way. But that is not being patient and understanding like Jesus. Like any teacher, we need to consider the differences of our students. And the main objective is simply one, to help each one understand and believe. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not enough that we believe that Jesus is risen. It is not enough to proclaim that Jesus is alive with all patience 
with all gentleness, let us help each other understand and believe in Jesus. The wisdom of the scripture reveals God's plan for us. As we journey with Christ, let us pray that His path of life may become clearer each day. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That as a church, we may be faithful in proclaiming the gospel of repentance and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in recognizing the goodness of Christ, the risen Lord, we may bring social justice to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the scripture may give enlightenment to those in the darkness of sin and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may recognize the presence of the risen Lord in the Eucharistic breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may rise in the fullness of joy in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our own petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. God our Father, hear our prayers. Accept the prayers of pilgrims journeying on his path of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. 
Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis R. Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessings now and forever. Amen. 
May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance, now and forever. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Regina Celi, Laetare, Alleluia. Qui aque me luisti portare, Alleluia. Esurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Amen. Uh -huh.